Hello and welcome. We'll learn step by step from scratch how can we do data driven testing with Postman. So this will be very easy and very interesting. We will learn how do we get data from a CSV file. We will also see how to get data from a JSON file and then we will run our data driven API requests. I will also show you how you can refer the values from the data files in the test scripts. So let's get started. I will discuss some useful tips with you as well during the sessions. So here, step number one is we will create our API request first. So I'm going to my Postman. I have opened my Postman on the browser. If you like, you can continue on the browser or if you are using a Postman on your desktop, you can use that. So here, uh, I'll take, I'll create a new API request. So I'm going to click on this plus button and I will create, let us say I take a, I go to this reqres.in website and I will select an API request from here. It has a lot of sample APIs. You can use any of your API requests. So I have this register user, which is a post request. I will click on this and here is the endpoint. This is the request body. This is the response that we get and the response body. So to get the complete URL, you can click on this URL and you will get the complete URL here. So I'll copy this and first I will change the method to post. This is the URL and I will go to the body section and click on draw and just copy this body here. And this is a JSON. So I will go here and say JSON and this is done and that's it i will save and here i can save it in a new collection or any of the existing collections first let me give it a name i will say this is register user and here i will go to the let us go to the new collection folder you can use any collection and i will save it so you can see this is saved here. Uh, I can also create a new folder inside this new collection. I can say add folder and I will name this folder as data driven demo. And I'll just put this API inside this folder. This is optional. I'm just doing this so that uh, we have a clean structure and you can understand it easily. You can keep this API in any collection. And now this is my API request. Let us run and check it. I will click on send. Once you have saved your request, you can run the request. And yes, you can see we are getting the response. We are also getting the response code 200 OK and everything is fine. Now, one thing I have observed here is if I give some, if I add something to this endpoint, let us say QA, and then I run this. In this case, in the response, I get 201, the status code 201 created, and then I also get the email and the password that I have sent in the request. So if I go back to the request body, this was the email I sent and the same email I have received. Let us say if I change this email and password and I save and send it again, you can see I'm getting the same email and password. So I can use this functionality to actually check uh, that I'm getting the same uh, values in the response. So this will be easy for validation. So I can use this. We have created an API request. Now we will create the variables and refer in the request. So here I can parameterize wherever I want to refer the data from the data files. So if you like, like if you want to, you can create variables like global variables or environment variables and def then refer them in the request. In this case, because I want to refer them directly from the data files, I will skip the step of creating the variables. I can just refer the variables directly within this request. So let us say I want to uh, get some data for the endpoint here. So let us say this, this part should come from a variable or from a data file. And this I will name as, let us say endpoint. So this is how I do it. I give double curly brackets and then give the variable name. So this is now parameterized. 
Similarly, let us say the email, I want to get it from the data file. So I will add a variable here as well. And this I will call as email. So within double curly brackets, you give the variable name and the same goes for, let us say password as well. And here I will give the variable name as password. So now these three variables or these three uh, data endpoint, email and password should come from a data file like a CSV or a JSON file. So for that, we will create a CSV file or a JSON file and add these values so that these can be referred from there. So let us do that. Now we have to go to run collection and then refer the data file. So before doing that, before going to run collection, let us first create the files, the test data files. So here uh, I'm on my Mac system. So I can go to Excel or numbers application to create a CSV file. If you are on Windows, you can just open an, your Excel file or Excel worksheet, add the data and save as .csv extension. Or the other way is you can just open any text editor or notepad on Windows and add data in a CSV format or comma separated format and then save with .csv extension. Let me show you. Uh, I'm here on my Mac, so I will open numbers, which is a uh, application similar to Excel. And here I can create a CSV file. So I'm just opening a blank file here. So this is like Excel. And here, uh, let me just remove these extra rows and columns. I will delete this as well. Yeah, this is fine. So this is an Excel file. So here I will give the same names as the variable names I have given, which is endpoint. So this is endpoint. Let me increase this so that you can see this properly endpoint then we have email and make sure this is should be case sensitive so uh, make sure that you give the same name exactly how you have given in the postman variables and this is password now here i will start giving the value so this is the header then we will have the data rows so let us say for the endpoint I will say, I'll give the endpoint here, then email, and password, then again the second data set, you can add any number of data sets, I will say I'll give some email and give some password. And I will save this. Now here for Mac, I have an option. I can go to file and say export to CSV. In case of Windows, you just have to save it and then change the extension to CSV or save it as a CSV file. So I will save it as a CSV file and I will call this as test data onecsv and this will go on my documents folder. So this is done. Now I will go to run collection. So here I will go to this collection, click on these three dots and say run collection. And here I'm just going to select the API that I want to run, which is register user. And here we have the option to select the file. And once I select the file, the iterations will get updated automatically based on the number of data sets we have in our file. So I'll click on select file and I will go to my documents folder and this is my CSV file. I will select the file and you can see it has updated two iterations because there were two data sets in my CSV file. Also, if you observe, my CSV file is added here and the data file type is updated to text CSV. So there are other options as well. 
application JSON or undetermined if it is not able to find what format is it, but it has found it is a CSV format, so it has used this. And we also have this very good feature that you can preview your data. So if I click on preview, you can see we are getting all our data and this is what you should see in a proper format. You should see these headers, which should be same as the variables we have given and your data here. In case you do not see this in a proper format, then you must change or uh, you, you must check your CSV file and must update the values. Now, one thing I am seeing here is this is an extra column. So I will have to check this. I'll go to my file and I don't know if this is something missing or I think it should be fine. Let me ch just run and check this. So here I will click on run new collection and let us see if it is able to use our variables or data from the data file. So here uh, looks fine. You can see it is saying 201 created, 201 created. So this looks fine. And here it does not shows us pass or fail because we do not have any tests in our API. So let me add some tests as well. I will go back to my API, go to the test section and I will just add a test to check status code is 201. So I'm clicking here in the snippet and it has added this snippet and I will just change 201 or uh, 200 to 201 and save it. I'll go back to the collection and I will say run again. And this time it should also run the tests. So you can see the tests are running and everything is passed. And I can also go to the console. We have learned this in the debugging session. If I go to this console here, I will clear and run again. And we can see all the output on the console. So it has done, it has done two times. If I look at the first run, you can see it has taken this API endpoint from our data file. And if I check the request body, it has taken this email and password from there. And then if I see the response body, this is how the response looks like. And then for the second run, this is the second run. This is the uh, endpoint taken. And if I check the request body, this is the request body, email and password taken from that CSV file. And this is our response. So this is working fine and we are able to run with a CSV file. Let us also see how we can use a JSON file. Now, if you want to create a JSON file, you can uh, use any notepad or text editor and add your JSON data and then save it as a .json format. So here, add JSON data in any text or notepad file and save as .json extension. Now, once you do that, you should also verify that you have a valid JSON data. And for that, we have a lot of options and tools online. So if I search for JSON uh, beautifier or validator, I can use any of the JSON formatter. So let me see if I get some options here. Yeah, this one is fine. Let me go to this one. This is JSON formatter and validator, and this is the URL. So I can directly create a JSON here, and then I can download it or I can copy it in my JSON file. So to create a JSON, so I'll give a curly bracket here, start, and stop and within this curly bracket I will add my data so let us say the first thing I want to add is the endpoint I'll say endpoint within quotes and then the value of the endpoint so I'll just copy the value so this is what I want I can also just copy from here as well then I give a comma and then the second value, which is email. And I give the
value of the email then comma and then the third data which is password and the value I'll give the value of the password and that's it now this is one set of data if you want one more set then you give a comma here so I give a comma here and just you can copy the same thing that is from the start of this curly bracket and the end of this curly bracket the same thing and here I can change the values okay and that's it so this is a valid JSON and you can also click on process to validate if it is a valid JSON or not and here I am going to download it so I will click on download JSON so it has got downloaded and there are many other tools so uh, if you just search for JSON formatter or beautifier you can find a lot of options so let me check if you go to Google and search for JSON beautifier or JSON formatter you should see all these options here let us just wait for this to give us some options meanwhile we have got our JSON file downloaded and this you can also do the other way like first you create a JSON file and then come here and just validate that your JSON is correct so this is very important to validate that you have got a valid JSON and for now I'll go back and use the JSON file in the collection runner so I'll go here let me clear the console logs and I will go back to my collection and say run collection and I'm just running this API and this time I will select a JSON file so I'm going to the downloads folder and this is my JSON file and yes everything looks fine uh, if I you can see it has it has updated two iterations and this is the file and it has selected application JSON in the file type and we have got a preview so if I click on preview so everything looks fine here I can now say run new collection and here everything is running fine it has run it two times with two sets of data and the tests are also passed if I look at the console you can see here this is my request body and then this is the first run this is the response body and for the second run this is my request body here and you can see everything is taken from the JSON file so this is how we can get data from a CSV or a JSON file now in case you want to uh, run this uh, you want to refer data from any of these data files in scripts like a test script or a pre-request scripts in that case you will have to use some different format let me show you if I go to my API I will clear the console and go back to my API and let us say I'm going to the tests and I will create a test I'll call it as verify email in the response and here I will say response body dot has and now in case you are referring this from any variable within postman we can just give it like this but this will not work this will not work in case of getting the data from a data file for that we will have to say data dot email so it will get data from the data file or the other way is I can say data and within square brackets I will give the variable name or the header name that is email so this is how we use this if we have to refer data in the scripts this is how we do this 
and let me save this and I'll run it again just to check this works fine so I'll run the collection I'll go to run collection and I'll select the file you can select CSV or JSON file and I will now run and check so you can see this is all working fine and verify email has also passed if I check the console output you can see this is the request body and here the email is raghav at req.in and then if I see the response body here as well the email is raghav at req.in and therefore this has passed so this is how you can refer data in APIs using data files and I hope this was very useful for you please do some hands-on if you have any questions you can let me know and I will see you in the next session thank you for watching and never stop learning